Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation with Sharla Janeka and the original design marriage playbook that you yes. can get on Amazon. And we're going to just jump right back in where we were. Thanks. Kids don't have a prefrontal cortex, so we take on nothing but emotion, feeling, mm -hmm. and we take false responsibility for our parents' emotions. Yeah. That's where that codependency can come in, too. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing the analysis, finding out if that is your thoughts, if how do I know if it's really rooted in love or not, yeah. It's that's why. Because if you're carrying your own thing and that introjection's there, mm -hmm. it might be the voice of like your protectors or your evil trinity of the accuser and their critical judge, and so yeah. I have to go back and make friends with them. Yeah. So let's just clarify, introject means somebody from my past who had a big influence on my life. It could be a mm -hmm. parent, it could be a pastor, it could be a teacher, a coach, somebody that now you've learned to relate with yourself that way. Mm -hmm. And many times it can be a way of protecting yourself so nobody ever is critical of you. And that leads into our perfectionism mm -hmm. where I learn how to take in, um, okay, so I will make sure that I'm always perfect. I always show up so nobody ever can be critical, but then you're literally living with abuse on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I've referenced the verbal abuse a couple times. Now, let me be clear. I have parents that love me passionately yes. and would bend over backward and do anything for me. Mm -hmm. That's why I had never conceptualized, I'd never put language to it because I know their love for me and I know that they had crazy whatever backgrounds that I can't even fathom they've lived through. Yes. So the interesting thing is we don't ever want to be a victim going, <clears throat> oh, I was abused. No. Stamp. But we want to be honest enough with ourselves because it was literally like the little me on the inside was holding a secret from myself. Mm -hmm. And when I finally acknowledged, I was like, oh, oh, even though it wasn't their intent, nope. even though it was a million times better than everything that they had lived through, which was atrocious, they had given me such a great gift of love. And in those moments where the lid popped off and there were trigger moments, those were verbal abuse. It wasn't intentional. Their heart is good. Yes. But I could I couldn't get healing until I actually labeled it. it. And yes. you can't forgive, you can't work through. And I had a pattern of people in my adulthood that were kind of verbally abusive. And I had been asking God, like, why does this keep happening? Am I doing something? Am I eliciting something? And I don't understand it all. But as long as that secret was held on the inside of me, it was almost like there was some kind of law of attraction or something that was happening. I don't know if I believe in any of that. I'm not vouching for it. I'm just saying, as long as that secret was there, it was like the enemy kept drawing that toward me and I didn't know how to have boundaries. I didn't know how to like stand up or deal with that because it was still a child part of me that hadn't resolved, healed, and then grown up to know how to steward that as an adult. Yes, that is so good because, and I want to say this, I always say, I didn't know what I didn't know until I know what I know. Exactly. And our parents, so we can say that. So, but we can't minimize our own yeah. pain. But in going through, when you're saying that little girl and what you don't, like knowing your battle, what you're fighting is half the battle. Exactly. Like you win when you can acknowledge it, yeah. heal it, yep. say I see you, yeah, and give it a voice. Mm -hmm. Because powerlessness is the worst place of feeling yeah. that causes these behaviors in our relationships. And so when you go into this dysfunction in this relationship and maybe you have this perfection and everything mm -hmm. needs to look good and I freak out if there is a spoon on the table or whatever. Or it's about your body. That happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Perfectionism with our appearance. That's the critical judge that turns yeah. inward because mm -hmm. when there is any kind of like major self-focus flaw, flaw mm -hmm. you're going to focus on that. And, and I always believe that we are called as Christians, you know, God... He never exposed, indicted, shamed. Mm. He he didn't judge and critique people. Yeah. He was always moved with like grace and compassion, but he always did Speak tell the truth. the truth. Even at the woman at the well. In when love. he had the encounter with her, he's like, So yeah, you've spoken correctly. You've got five husbands, as a matter of fact. But do you know what? He didn't shame her about it. Yeah. And so in our relationships, are we shaming? What is the behavior that we're doing, even if we don't like something? Are we so critical? Is that critic showing up in the right. perfection, right. in the missed expectations? Yeah. Because when we have to, disappointment, disappointment is really one of the the most damaging mm -hmm. assaults yeah. on people because we drink from the cup of disappointment daily and we yeah. are not taught to question it. We're not taught to move through it. We're not taught anything. It's just mm -hmm. like, oh, sorry about your bad luck. You know, put your big girl panties on and deal with it and just move on. Stop crying, little boy. Don't cry. Mm -hmm. 
deal with it. Dad doesn't show up, you know, for his weekend or mom doesn't show up or they forget to pick you up at school. Like any kind of thing like that. Oh, well, you're okay. Or even positivity, like trying to like make it all okay and magical is also a form of neglect on accident yes. because you're still not authentically saying, hey, that sucks. You're not acknowledging any pain and you're not yeah. teaching a child or an adult that emotions are valid. Yeah. You're invalidating your feelings and you're taught not to trust, to negate, minimize, and neglect. It's emotional neglect. Mm -hmm. And it's totally accidental because the generation before then, they were trying to put food on the table. Yes, they were. So each generation is doing the best they can and we've come a long we way. We get better. The pendulum swings and we get a little bit better. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Pendulum swings. But it's still okay to acknowledge neglect. And then when we acknowledge it, now what can we do with that? Well, when we acknowledge it, we make, we let it know we see it and mm -hmm. we move through the healing process with that. Yeah. But we also need to remember that one of the fruit in the SWOT assessment, it's really to evaluate Mm -hmm. to check yourself. You're not judging your spouse. This is like, you're not sitting there doing the SWOT assessment on your spouse. Mm -hmm. This is for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. please remember that. Yes. Because we want to have an honest assessment because you can't control your spouse. Mm -hmm. You cannot change your spouse and yeah. you are not responsible for your spouse's mm -hmm. behavior. That's right. So anyone that thinks differently is deluded. Yeah. Honestly. And so as you're going through this, just remember like, Am I mining for gold? Am I taking out trash? Mm, okay. As, Make believer, that as believers, you yeah. are called in our children, in our parenting, in yeah. our friends, in ourselves. Yeah. Love yourself. It's good. It's good. And so it's like, am I mining for the gold and calling out the gold or am I taking out trash all the time? Mm. Because let me just tell you, people know their trash. People know their flaws. People know their they have their own critical judges. Yeah. And so when we come alongside and we validate that negative, mm -hmm. we just stump it down a little bit more. Yeah. We just say, suppress who you are. You're not good. Mm -hmm. And so it's literally our voice is the most powerful voice in a room at any given time. I truly believe that God gave us our voices. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say think to the mountain. It says speak to the mountain. Oh, right? that's good. And so we are to speak and use our words, life, death, blessing, curse. Wow. What am I doing in my relationship? What am I doing to this self? Because if you are an unhealthy mm -hmm. half, you're, you're going to have another unhealthy. It's not a whole. Yes, that's right. Two halves don't make a whole. That's right. So that moves you in this perfectionism. So you have to look um, at resolving the barriers yeah. that you have with self so that you can have a healthy view of others. If you, and if you have a wrong view of God, you're going to have a wrong view of self and others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So yes, there's only one of us. So we take one person to all those relationships, whether mm -hmm. we realize it or not. So after you evaluate that, you're like, hey, have I moved towards you or have I moved away from you? Uh huh. So personal. Is there a lack of intimacy and unity? Mm. Judgment and criticism will always pull you away. Yeah. It will bring separation. And the moment you think this person is not safe, oh. the moment you think that, whether it's true or not, you have now created a moat with alligators and that person does not get to come close to you. Mm -hmm. So it is wise to have good people in your life, therapists, pastors. Yes. If someone is actually unsafe, please Make sure you have safeguards. Yes. 100%. But the enemy is also very tricky to say normal human stuff that's just messy about relationship. Mm -hmm. They're unsafe. They're bad. They're hurting me. They're wounding me, blah, blah. And so the critic, I think everything you're saying, that really is a illumination for us to recognize, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. am I now character assassinating them? You are unsafe versus, hey, around this trigger, that's not safe behavior. And now I'm going to put a boundary here mm -hmm. versus unilaterally, you're a bad, bad person. person then you know your narrative has shifted from practical behavior, like, hey, let's do something about this that's not healthy versus you as a person are unhealthy. Well, shame tells you that who you are mm -hmm. is unhealthy and bad. Yeah. So we can actually shame others. Yes, absolutely. As well as take on that inner shame yeah. as well. That's right. And so if you're moved apart, if you're completely set apart, if you are not, like, if you're like, mm-hmm, mm I don't know if I want to be with you. I don't. Maybe I made a mistake, and maybe this is not working. I don't like who you are, and you're not making much money, and mm -hmm. all the things are there. If there's just judgment, yeah, where's life? Right. And so evaluate what your thoughts are. Stop, think, and challenge. Yeah, we must challenge. And so it's going to affect your sex life. It's going to affect your intimacy, your mm -hmm. communication. Yeah. Um, it's going to affect the energy in the air in your home, the yeah. atmosphere. Yeah. Is it life or is it death? Your kids are going to walk in and they're going to sense tension. Mm -hmm. 
It really will. And so it's really important that you keep the art of pursuit. There's a whole section in here on the art of pursuit. Yeah. It's like the art of pursuing your spouse, the art of giving and receiving. Mm. It's not just receiving, yeah. it's giving. Yeah. It's there's a section on love covers so others can recover. Oh, say that. That's again. your words. Wow. Love covers so That's others so can recover. Wow. That is what mining for gold does. Yeah. Like if you are a, a faith-based marriage, if you have um the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. like we have a huge chance of success by partnering with it. Mm -hmm. Because you know there's times that it talks about how it says we speak to the mountain yeah. and it moves. And so we can contend and wage war and we can fight for our marriage and we can we can stand in the gap for our spouse if they are having a moment. <laughs> Which sometimes a couple years. <laughs> I've seen that. A moment. Yes. Yeah, a moment. Or if there's, you know, situations that occur. Yeah. Whatever the pain is, there are times when the Lord does say that. But there's also times in Isaiah 45, and it says, I go before you mm -hmm. and I level the mountains. Come on. And it talks about a threefold um, cord. cord is not easily broken. Yeah. And I really believe that because Jesus is always strong. Mm -hmm. He's unilaterally the perfect yes. one. He is always strong. But there are seasons when, you know, usually it finds where one of them is kind of out and the other can, yeah. you know, handle the stuff. And yeah. then maybe the other one gets weak and tired. And then you, and there's seasons where you're like both running your race and you're laying in its glory story. Yeah. And then there's other times where you're like totally in different lanes and you're yeah. like, dude, who did I marry? I'm so disappointed. Yeah. It's not what I wanted. Yeah. And not what I thought. And yeah. so it's important that we take grieving into consideration as well in those seasons. Yeah. But we also need to know that there are seasons where we both have to rest and we have to surrender to the Lord mm -hmm. and say, God, if you don't level this mountain before me, I don't know what I'm going to do. But he says that he levels the mountain, that he crushes the gates of iron mm -hmm. and he destroys our bars of bronze. And that's a picture of our pain yeah. and our, you know, prison places yeah. and our right. captive places. on the inside on the inside yes yeah. that's right but i've seen him do it in the natural it's been amazing that's so good and so you have to protect the personal mm. space because it will bring sexual dysfunction intimacy outages and it develops intimacy anorexics because we can get trained in our brain to be like so you I said that really you. fast oh. intimacy anorexics yes we wow. condition ourselves to become intimacy anorexics to where i don't need you Mm -hmm. I become self-sufficient. I'm, I'm self-sufficient without you. We can be roommates. Mm -hmm. I don't need you. And not fight for and connection. Fight for connection. Yeah. So it will make you move away from that. And so yeah. make sure that you're guarding your personal time, personal space, intimacy. Yeah. And then you move into priorities mm -hmm. for the next one, which comes back to number one, people, perfection, yeah. personal priorities is where it's at. Like, yeah. am I prioritizing you? Yeah. And so I just think it's a really... Um, important. There are relationships that have become too familiar. This goes back to people mm. impacting your primary relationship. And am I, what am I prioritizing? Yeah. What am I valuing? Where your heart is, your treasure will be, you know, in the Bible is talking about like probably your money, mm -hmm. but literally your time is the most valuable commodity that you have time. Yeah. We're not making more time. Right. Like, right. We've got to value it. Exactly. And so what am I valuing in here? That's when my right. husband comes home, like, I, I've had times where he's like, we haven't spent any time together. I'm like, what are you talking about? We watched TV. <laughs> like we sat next to each other for three hours tonight. And he's like. That wasn't quality time. I played a game and you watched a Hallmark movie or, you know, mm -hmm. one of your spy movies. And I'm like, yeah, but we're right next to each other. And that's not connection to him. He is like. Yeah. Quality time. Yeah. He's acts of service. He's, I want you to be thinking and be intentional with me. So if you think your spouse is needy, maybe they're actually the healthy one. Exactly. And I'd be like, because oh. I'm like over here, I'm like, just give me a gift. <laughs> I love gifts. I love flowers. I love gifts. I mean, I that's my that. thing. I like that Learned tells something. me that you're doing it, right? And yeah. so um, we give often out of what we want. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm like, but I went by and brought you... Um, you know, a new shirt today. And I, or I bought, he could care less. Yeah. Why did you spend money on that? Why did you buy me those shoes? I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Mm. Right. And he's over here. Like I ran your hot bath, <laughs> clean the kitchen. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> like that does nothing for me to get me to the bedroom. You know, you it's like, 
how are we serving one another? Mm. How are we connecting with one another? Yeah. And so it's just okay. it's just a fun little um, assessment to do. It doesn't have to be as long as what we talked about in deep, but there mm. are things that you can look at in that. Yeah. Because you want to cultivate. And what we do by intention instead of intuition, mm. we achieve acceleration. That's so good. So when we're intentional in our relationships, our finances, our communication, our sex lives, yeah. our intimacy, our own self journey of healing. Yes. When we're intentional, God, like, I believe that the Lord blesses that. Yeah. I believe that there's just a natural fruit. It's just practical. It's a it's a proven thing. Mm -hmm. Not just a spiritual principle. It's yeah. a, just natural. Yeah. Study the self. Study to show that self approved. Mm -hmm. When we do by intention, what we've been doing by intuition, we achieve acceleration. That's We're going to heal faster than we would if we just do it. We're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They need some attention. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's why this is so important that whether you're single, you're engaged, Anything. you're in a proactive sweet honeymoon season, or things are starting to get a little clunky, or you're like the wheels have already fallen off. I think that whole trajectory, there's space to really invest strategically. Mm -hmm. So I normally don't talk about it, but I am single. Ironically, I'm a really anointed marriage therapist. God sense of humor. But I went through this proactively as a single person going, okay, Lord, start my premarital counseling. Yes. And so I would encourage you to do the same, whether you're divorced, widowed, married, engaged, wherever you are in that relationship journey, we are relational beings. And in vulnerability, I'll share a story of how this walked out in my life, <clears throat> that I have somebody that's a dear friend, I love them, but everything started to go really, really terrible and I didn't want to be friends with them and I didn't want them in my life anymore. And so I started praying them out of my life. <laughs> And if you have ever had somebody in your life, whether married or otherwise, that you're like, get out of my life, pray deliverance from Egypt. I get you. I'm, I've been there, right? We're all human. We're on this together. But I would say, take the time to be proactive. Take the time to journal, reflect, be mindful, do exercises like these, do workbooks. Because even though it wasn't a romantic relationship, by doing the steps, going through it, the Lord showed me the moment you, it's like, I like an inner judgment, inner vow, where I was like, oh, you're not safe. And mm -hmm. it was like this illumination of a moment, that a clunky moment between us, I was like, you're not safe. Mm -hmm. And then later, something else happened. I was like, you're bad. Not only are you not safe, a couple months later, I was like, you're bad. And in the moment, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I didn't like have a neon sign that said, you're making an inner vow and a judgment that will destroy this relationship in about eight months. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen, right? There's no, uh, <laughs> no, like Vanna White didn't show up to help me understand what was happening in my heart. What was happening is something on the inside started to harden itself in self-protection. And what happened is I was ugly. I was probably rude and dismissive. And you know me, I'm not like that much, but compared to what I normally am, and that was sowing negativity, lack of love, lack of joy and peace in our relationship, the person was responding because we're both human and things are fluid. And so then they were becoming less nice, less fun, more critical, more harsh. And I had to take responsibility that Shannon, you're not a victim. You are a part of the dynamic that you created. While you're praying for deliverance for something, this is actually a relationship the Lord has appointed. He is blessing and it's good for your future that this person is in your life. And I literally was praying them out of my life. Who in your life needs to be there? That God is actually assigned for your good and not your harm. But the enemy has been sowing seeds of discord, of mistrust, of self-protection and judgment. Knowing that now can prevent heartache when later you're asking God, why do and relationships end? Why does this happen? Why is nobody ever there for me? Be responsible. Are you mindful of the thoughts you're allowing? Are you entertaining negative critical statements that become judgments, walls, and barriers that then are creating disaster in your future relationships and blocking the promises and the blessings God has been trying to place in your life? Thank you so yeah. much for being with us today. Thank you, Sharla. Yes. And how do we find your original design marriage playbook? This is available at... Amazon on Amazon mm -hmm. and you can just 
Type in Original Design Marriage Playbook and it'll pop up for you. And you can get it at the Gateway bookstores as well at gatewaypeople.com slash bookstore. Yay! And I did a positive review. So please, as a shout out to my friend, put a positive review on Amazon. Yes, please. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. See you for the next episode.